Hello. Uh, <laughs> my name is Luis Aragon. I'm the president of the board of Teatro Mascara Magica. And seated to my right is our artistic director and founder, William Bill Virtus. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We're going to talk a little bit about theater, Teatro Mascara Magica, and hopefully invigorate. Um, what was that word? <laughs> invigorate. <laughs> I never heard that word. <laughs> well, I, I, need mean, I, I need invigorate. Yes, okay, yeah, I'm, glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad. Is you there an invigorator yeah, in the field? Yeah, yeah. We need one right now. So, uh, <laughs> so off to that great, and we're not actually a comedy company, no, we're but we're theater, we're theater of uh, the absurd. Yes, yes, as you can yeah. well see. So, um, you... Wait a minute, uh, you're the president. Uh, Why am I not the vice president? Because you've shied away from vice. Oh, you're right. right. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, yes. Uh, so, William, Bill. Uh, My real name is Guillermo, though. It okay. really is. Yeah. No, I, I know. That's why we're going to call you Bill. Okay. Because <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> yeah. My dad changed it because nobody could say Yeah, Guillermo. I don't recall asking you that, but I'm glad you volunteered that. Thank it's, you. Uh, I'm sure My you're... real name, I, you have to know. Yes. It's Guillermo, Guillermo Alejandro Virchis de Olvera. Wow. I like Olvera. Isn't there a street named after you? Uh, yes. It's Olvera. It's, I, in fact, I get my guacamole in Olvera Street. Okay. Olvera. It's amazing. Yeah, amazing. Again, another, another theatrical uh, off the or, track. Or, uh, but, you know... <laughs> So, uh, it's who we are. so how, what do you want me to call you, or uh, you just want me to call you? Yeah. <laughs> I've been called a lot of things. <laughs> Bill would be fine. Okay, Bill. Uh, memo. You, memo is the translation of Bill. Yeah, I didn't get that memo. Okay. But anyway, so you didn't get that memo? No. Okay. Memo. Uh, so, uh, so this guy the walks into a bar and fun. it's Teatro Mascara Magica. Teatro yeah. Mascara. Uh, the story is that you learned uh, a great deal of your English, uh, that you're obviously still learning, uh, <laughs> a, a, as a child, uh, uh, acting in Shakespeare at the Old Globe. Is that true? That is true. That is true. You know, uh, somebody just asked me, that's weird that you asked, because they asked me, when did I learn English, right? And literally, I couldn't tell you when, but I know the influences were the theater at the Globe when I was nine, because I, I was seven when I came. Mm. Uh, and uh, the television. And my father, of course, because my father spoke like three or four languages. But uh, theater was a main component of learning it, you know. Even though I didn't speak the bar, you know, but uh, I think that is a very important uh, learning process. Television was probably the main, the storytelling device, I think. When you were on the, uh, when you were on the stage, because you were on the stage at eight, age nine or ten, yeah, or, eight or nine. what was your? Did it? You know, we've heard the expression "love at first sight." Mm -hmm. Was it that emotion, or was it, what emotion was it? Well, I, I I think it's a saying that you had in music. You know, when you probably start playing piano, and I don't know how, how did you start playing piano? With my fingers. Yeah, you, you but no, no, I was. <laughs> Well, you know, I know they want to hear about me. No, no, but Who I know, wouldn't. Yeah. But I'd kind of no, like but to what say, I was saying yeah. is it's kind of the same, isn't it? I mean, you yes. have an instrument. Yes. Your instrument is obviously uh, concrete, which is your your right. not a concrete piano, but it's a, it's it's there. Where literature and drama are really a mental uh, instrument, hmm. and. It's because language is so much part of it, it becomes the medium of it. The word becomes the medium of theater. Like light is the medium of photography, right? Uh, and, and, and the word is really the medium. And so learning a language, when you're, when, you're in a, uh, uh, when you're a foreigner in this country, you have to learn a new language. It, it changes your thought and your pattern of thinking, you know. Uh, and because, you know, in, in, in Spanish, you know, the White House is not La Casa Blanca, is it, right? It's La Casa Blanca, right? Yes. Uh, it's, it's reversed, right? The House White. The House White. So what happens is that in your thinking processes, literature becomes and, and, and the voice becomes very important. So when I started learning English and I, and I learned it from theater, 
it kind of went with both sides of the brain together. I see. And, and uh, that was the, the point. And, and to your question about uh, music, uh, I wrote my first song when I was nine years old. I think there is an in inevitability about art. Uh, one is called to it. If it is truly part of, of, of uh, your core, uh, it is inescapable. And uh, I think that's what separates true artists from journeymen who, who go in and out. And uh, it hit, that theater has been your core. And from that moment forward, uh, that caused you to found, uh, to, to start Teatro Mascara Magica. And uh, if I can capture that one moment where you, you and Dr. Uh, Huerta uh, decided to form Teatro Mascara, what was the prevailing thought, that moment where you conceived it? I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a conversation that we were giving time and our talent and some of our treasure to others and articulating their voice. And because I, I don't know whether it's because we all came from the educational field, which was very grounded on logic and uh, literature and progression, progressive thinking. I don't know if that was the case. But we spoke the same language. Remember we talked about language? So Jorge Huerta, myself, and Dr. Floyd Gaffney uh, got together and said, you know, it is time for us to leave the nest that we came from, which was the Globe Theater, which was Teatro Meta. And even our own institutions, you know, where we did our work. And that was the thought. Uh, it was almost like the freedom, you know. It was, almost, it was almost like crossing the border to a new frontier. And it was our new frontier. Of uh, We realized uh, that one day we would be the majority. And that was very strange. Like, this was like 1970s, right? Uh, and and it, uh, we, been, we were all successful in our own little institutions. We could have stuck there, you know, and did what we did. But I think all of us three were committed to those voices, the African-American community, the Latino community, and the Chicano community. For me, was I was Mexican. Uh, Jorge was a Chicano, <clears throat> Mexican-American. And Floyd Gaffney was an African-American. And uh, we all had issues in the 60s, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and that was where I think we crystallized the thought of being an independent company. Now here it is, you know, like Shakespeare said, two boards and a play. I, I have, uh, of course, been a lifetime uh, supporter of Teatro, uh, but it, it, it's always amazed me at the foresight that, uh, that you had when you created Teatro Mascara Magica. No doubt you would have been in theater all your life, but that you chose to, to be a part of, of uh, creating this, this theater company at a time, frankly, when uh, it, it may have been difficult to f foretell the demographics that you referred to and the need for the voice. Um, so I think that's, that's very impressive. Let me ask you, in, in the now, you're, we're about to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Teatro Mascara Magica. So congratulations to you, Bill. And, congratulations and to you, because you, ha you have shepherded us in the last five years into another level of professionalism and also articulating our voice and keeping our focus, you know. Uh, but I think our 30th year is very important, you know. Uh, be, before you, you, you go there, because that's obviously something we, we want to talk about, during this 30-year journey, uh, was there a time when you felt, and maybe there were several times, but was there a time when you felt, yeah, this simply, I can't carry on with Every this? Every day. Every day, really. I, you, you know what happens, it's like you're growing every second as an artist. And in the growth, there's doubt. There's weird stuff about growth. It's like, you know, if you plant a seed and it starts growing, there's a doubt always in the positive sense that it will grow if you nurture it. But there's a doubt. 
will it, will it really grow into what I think the seed should be? This, this tree that will give this fruit, right? Because mm -hmm. you've seen the fruit out there. You've seen the good trees. We came from good theater. We saw the good trees. We were involved in it. I, I was blessed by being surrounded by, I mean, incredible artists. Uh, Craig Knoll, Jack O'Brien, Anthony Zerbe, you know, uh, uh, God, uh, Augensteyer. I mean, I can go on and on and on. Victor Buono. Mm -hmm. I mean, David McKellen, Robert Hayes. I mean, I, I mean how can you not take that uh, and say, I, I see the tree? But there's always doubt. If anything about art, if if doubt is not in it, then you, you're right. Will it be? Will they like it? Will they? You know that kind of stuff. But beyond that, I think all all, all of us, all of us, even yourself, is that you 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 have this uh, optimism that the work will be done. Now, the reality is, it hits you every day because there's no money. Mm. Right? Right. Uh, remember, we were talking about the two who's. Who is the audience and who is the players? Right. Without those two who's, you know. Now, there's a lot of people that want to be the who actors, but they don't have any idea of the commitment. When you've been on the other side and you know it's a job, mm -hmm. right? That you don't, you, the, the time, time. Time. You know. When you talk about doubt, I'm reminded of, uh, of uh, John Steinbeck. Uh, kept a diary when he was writing The Grapes of Wrath. And uh, I, of course, had read The Grapes of Wrath. It's my favorite n novel. Well, you drink them now. You, you, you <laughs> like a lot of wine, right? This is that's why I like The Grapes of Wrath. Well, that's, I didn't want the audience to know that, but <laughs> thank you for sharing that truth. But his diary is, uh, and I've given it to friends of mine who are, oh, you know, I'm not a good writer. No. Here's John Steinbeck writing The Grapes of Wrath and the doubt. There are some pages I wrote, because he had a rule, he would write 400 words a day, come rain or shine, oh. sober, drunk, whatever. Right. And uh, some of these, at the end of the day, he'd say, well, I wrote 400 words of crap. This is, you know, yeah. he used much colorful right. language. Right. Uh, and I'm thinking, oh my God, if John Steinbeck, it, 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 as he's giving birth to perhaps the greatest uh, American uh, novel right. written, um, has those doubts, then, uh, you know, it validates your point that, that to create art is to expose the most intimate part of who we are. When I can't imagine the courage it takes an actor to go and do a scene uh, that, that draws from great emotion. Well, yeah, no, that, you know, it's a, it, it's a two... <sighs> How do, uh, the, 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 side, the sword has two edges, right? So you think about the positive and the doubt and the, the, the whole part of failure is in, in our business. Failure is right next to the shoulder and it's tapping you and you're going, get away, get away, get away. Uh, I've seen it. You've seen failure, uh, both personal, artistic, emotional, psychotic. Never failed. You, you never, never failed. I've never failed. But you go never on. Failed. Yeah, I, I failed a lot. But the, the, whole, the whole thing is this, that in our quest, in, 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 in theater, especially theater, theater is not one person. Theater is a collaboration of all kinds of voices. As a director, you are the manager of those voices. And there are people that doubt even coming in your ability. And you go, well, why are you with me, right? Mm -hmm. Even when they've seen work that you've done that's been successful, there's still, there's a little doubt. Where do I fit into this thing? So as you, as, as it sits on your shoulder, uh, you bring all these people together. Now, just think about how theater is, okay? You, as an artist and as a composer, you have your piano and you have your voice and you have your arms and your keys. And, I mean, no other guy is going to come in and say, let me play the, the right hand, right? You have both hands. True. And in theater, there is a right hand or the left hand of other people, hmm. right? The piano is another person. 
The sound guy is another person. The costumer is another. The publicist. So you bring all these people and you go, wow, how do they merge into one idea? Right. It's like, like having a canvas and go, okay, everybody get a brush and let's paint this tree. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I mean, just think about the complexity of it. Now, in, in, in this, in this uh, thing called collaboration, one has to deal uh, 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 and, and be the lead of the conversation. That's the director, right? Or the producer, the director. And you need to have an open mind because all those other ideas have to merge with yours. Mm. Again, the seed, right? You, you plant the seed. Another guy can water it. Another guy can put the fertilizer. Another guy trims it. And mm -hmm. you, a community has to take care of the tree. That's what theater is. And Teatro Mascara Magica is that community, uh, which is really exciting because uh, it, it all has to be taking care of that uh, growth. Right. And, and just uh, one, one note on, on music. You're right. The, the composer writes the, the, the music. But then other hands come in. The arranger, the singer, the musicians. Uh, N not unlike what you were describing, there's the playwright writes a play, but then the director comes in and all that. Uh, well, what's a play without presenting it? It's an it's what it could be just a book, a story. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. plays are to be seen. Right. Craig Knoll told me one time, the producing artistic director of the Globe, mm -hmm. who was like my father mentor for years. Mm -hmm. He said, "Bill, remember this: plays are to be heard, and movies are to be seen." Mm, okay, that's interesting. So what is a primary goal, right? To be heard, to be listened to, to hear the words, to hear the words. Shakespeare said, say it trippingly on the tongue. Do not mouth the words, you know. Say it trippingly on the tongue. In other words, be articulate with the word. Reading. Theater teaches kids to read. Mm -hmm. right. You know, to dig deeper in the word. That's what teatro does. Teatro is not about entertainment and, you know, uh, it, it, it cannot be that. Theater was never meant to be like that. Theater was meant to have people be moved to action. Acting action. Is it not as simple as a person having uh, a life experience, maybe a tragedy or even happiness, and being so filled with that individual experience that he or she wants to, it to be shared? So that person who writes that play wants the audience to become that person in terms of the emotion that is brought on by Absolutely. That. Teatro, the, the, the teatro and theater. Teatro is a, is a, a, a genre. It's, it can be analogous to theater, but teatro is a genre that does exactly what you're saying. It puts you in the other person's space. The campesinos, for right. instance. The maid, you know, the farm worker. The abused person, the oppressor, the oppressee, right? Teatro does that. Theater does that in, in, in its bigger sense. But uh, the word teatro is analogous to political change. Okay, well, I, you're, you're teaching me something. Uh, I, I had never made a distinction between theater and teatro. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you're saying that it is it is a, a philosophical. What is it? What is the, the characteristic that differentiates? Well, uh, yeah, the, the translation of theater, of course, is teatro. Is teatro. Yes. But, but the genre of theater that's called teatro, it's agiprop. It's it, it's in your face uh, agiprop. Uh, it's almost like theory of the absurd. You know okay. those genres. But teatro has a d different style. It. It is ad actually political in its, in its intent. It's also theatrical. Of course. And sometimes it makes fun of itself, like Los Vendidos by Luis Valdez, right? And it shows stereotypes that you go, my God, how, how are you doing this? Well, it's showing you a mirror of what other people see, uh, and which, is, which is very uh, 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 brave to do, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so when we, we didn't call the, our, our, somebody asked, why didn't you just call your theater uh, magical magic? Because our th theater is Teatro Mascara Maica. Why didn't you call magic. it ma magical magic. theater? Well, th we could have. Yeah. Because theater is magical, but that's no. not what we are. No. We're teatro. Right. 
with these masks that are magical and masks of, of, of all kinds of different cultures. In fact, our, 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 our logo are, are, are different masks of different cultures. So uh, when we began this journey of Tiat, we, uh, we did theater. I mean, I've done 40, 50 musicals, you know, Shakespeare. Uh, all I, I've been very blessed to be able to have a playhouse at Southwestern College and others to do these plays. Uh, so the vast experience is, my, it was, is the world of theater, the Western world of theater, as well as the Spanish world. The teatro comes into this pathway mm -hmm. that we chose because it was the essential community that we were speaking about. We talked about the, the 30 years. Uh, do, we, do you think Teatro Alaska has to do anything different as it approaches uh, the, the next, let's say, 10 years? Well, you know what? Uh, in fact, I was just, somebody says, what, what? I was asked, what, 10 years from now, what do you see? Well, right. 10 years from now, I probably we're going to be dying. I, I'm going to be 85 years old 10 years from now. So, so I'm going, okay, this is scary. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I hope not, but let's just say in ten, can I have your jacket? Yeah, you right? can have my Thank jacket. You. Yeah, I'll leave you my hat. No, too. I don't want that. No, no, you okay. So anyway, ten years from now, this is what I, I, I hope. This is the, that we build a new voice. I'm looking for ways to present theater, teatro, and theater in a different, unique way. Okay. Can you now, describe watch. what that means? See this thing? Yes. This is really important. Right. Not to us but to the audience. The, uh, the young audiences are duped by this. Yes. Okay. So how do we tell them to throw away this other brain that they're connected to, right? How do we do that? Well, the way we do technology is we have to merge this thing, this, this kind of delivery system mm -hmm. in life. In other words, when you're here, you're not live. So how do we bring a new audience and the old audience to what theater really is, which is the live experience, right? Okay. So we were just speaking, you and I, before this interview about genres that, that had been exposed to us. Right. Theater of the Absurd, UNESCO, right? right. Expressionism, Impressionism, uh, Genet, you know, Edward Albee. Yeah, I mean, cool. Pinter. Pinter. All, I mean, all these great authors that came in at one time that were speaking of the point of view of that moment in history. To do that, and they did it very well, by the way. It wasn't preachy. It was about the human existence of a particular environment. In order for us to get out of the victimized role, hmm. is find a new voice of entertainment that is truly entertainment, which is intellectual. Shakespeare is very entertaining. Ionesco is very entertaining. Theater is, is it, it, I don't mean froth. I mean thought-provoking. Something that you can even laugh at. Irony, right? So to find a new voice, a new way to, a new delivery system, I don't know how we even survive in this theater thing with sets that cost a million dollars. Right. I mean, how can you do Les Miserables with all this stuff, you know? Well, you do it as best you can with two sets and stuff. But it isn't Les Mis, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it is not that. So. Even high schools are having problems with getting properties. You know, they, they just copy the thing and blah, blah, blah. So how do we get away from this frosting, right? I remember going to a rock concert 30 years ago and, and then going with my kids to, uh, to see Coldplay. And the difference was... Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mean, just, I, I, uh, uh, we were just talking about the Beatles. Mm -hmm. You know, they quit because they could not stand the noise. They couldn't sing the songs live, right? right? right. So they went into an environment that created music, the recording studios, because live was impossible. Well, now live is everything else but music. Right. 
In fact, you don't know, you don't even know if they're singing. Right. I went to a, a nightclub and I saw two people and they sound like a rock band, right? All this stuff. Sure. And I was looking at their hands. The guy wasn't even playing. Right. Well, the tracks. And right. I, I'm going, okay, now, now how do we, again, now here's an audience with, you know, and it's money. Two guys are better than, an, I mean, for the entrepreneur to, you know, instead of a band. And mm -hmm. now here musicians don't have jobs, you know, right. and blah, blah, blah. Theater has to kind of come to sense and say, okay, how can we think out of the box in presentation? Right. Because right. right now that is their stage. That is their stage. The, uh, <clears throat> but you you believe that uh, we can make the transition. Oh, I, I'm I, I'm I I am firmly believe it, and I'll tell you, I think you said in an interview that we have to give n new people voices, new artists, and and how to write. Mm -hmm. There is no there is no lab. If we could create a lab of failure, well, that would be great. And I mean a failure to succeed. That you can come to a place to fail and grow from that failure and not be criticized, but learn from that failure. We don't have that anymore. We don't, you can't do a play without it costing you a zillion dollars. Mm -hmm. You know? True. I mean, I mean, we have put on plays that we've killed audiences. Literally, because it's been so bad that they go, is this what it is? I mean, can you imagine the first guy that goes sees a bad play going, is this what the people were talking about? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking about the play. I'm not talking about production values. Right, right. I'm talking about the play. Yeah. So, because why? We haven't had time for that off, 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 off Broadway experience. We haven't had those trials off, you know, before we get in the big white wave, you know? I mean, we're so hungry that I mean, we're the first Chinese play, and we've got to, you know, we're the first Latino play, we're the first Afri yeah, the first Indian right. play. Uh, and you go, well, uh, uh, ooh, you know, yeah. it's scary. It, the moment is more important than the actual product. Uh, but uh, with Casa Familiar, where we're going to have actually three theaters. We have the large 300-seat theater, the uh, salon, they call it, that's a little under 100 seats. Then we have an amphitheater behind that. So uh, some of the things that you, you've, you've talked about, readings, showcase, workshops, we're going to be able to do. And why is San Isidro significant to you? Well, it's, uh, it's ironic. I come from Mexico City, right? It's two minutes away from where I was born practically, Mexico, right? It is, a, it is the Berlin Wall. We need to knock off that wall. And I think the before, our voice, before they build, before another they build one. it, another one, right? Yeah. We need to, we need to be at the, at that pivotal point of history, of location, to launch from. Just think about this. Just think about the United States. If we are in the, the southwestmost part of America, yes, right next to the border, and we go all the way across from that, th that whole beam, that's. That is the, the that is the launching pad. That that is the launching pad. I, I, I thought that it is is poetic justice that of all because Teatro La Vasca has been in search oh, of a forever. venue forever. And we've and rented we, a lot yeah, of venues. We, we've been uh, the pasarela in search of a yeah, venue. We've been and, we've been the minority theater of other theaters. It, and isn't it uh, again a poetic justice that we end up in San Isidro on the border? It's almost. If, if you could pick any place in San Diego, mm, that's it. Uh, and because that's it. it is and so people, symbolic, it is in every sense. Right? And it's so challenging in every sense. Right. And you're absolutely right. You know, it's like, uh, just think about it. Uh, if you study Wagner and, you know, Mozart and, you know, all the great, great composers. They have no future, by the way. No, no future. Yeah, they, they, they. But. Where did they start? They started right on the ground where they were. Mm -hmm. Right? And their mm -hmm. music went out to the world. And it wasn't the very, I mean, you know, there was conflict throughout those artists, oh, right? Sure. Uh, you know, Michelangelo, or, you know, I mean, we're, you know, he, he didn't travel to Austria. You know, he painted there in the ground of the battleground. The battleground. Shakespeare, for God's sake. 
Somebody said that Shakespeare never traveled. I, you know, I mean, that's a, that's the story that he, you know, how could he create this stuff? He must have had a great mind. Well, so other people came and told stories, right. and he grabbed them and goes, "Yes, yes, yes, I can do Italy. <laughs> you know, it's just, I'll just change from Rome to, you know, to, from Rome to, to, to Corona. You know, yeah, Verona, but yeah. the people are the same. Yeah, you know, and so guess what? That's that's it. You know, that's going to be our that's going to be our Stratford on the border." <laughs> I like right? that. Don't you think that some of the uh, "quote unquote" issues with San Isidro are really reflective of some some of the uh, stereotyping and and frankly the racism that is uh, becoming virulent right now, given uh, you know the political environment. Uh, instead of looking at San Isidro as kind of a cool, niche kind of place with uh, you know people view it as with some degree of alarm, and again, I think that reflects. Uh, you know, an unjust way of looking at. You have to break, you have to break that whole uh, mirror that has been portrayed or painting that has been portrayed. You just got to destroy it. It's a myth. At one time, it may have been a reality, you know, uh, but I don't think so because I've, I've, I've lived you know, really close to the border. We're constantly fighting myths. Women can't uh, be doctors, uh, Latinos can't be, we, we, we not, you know, we're Don Quixote knocking down these, these yeah, exactly. false, these premises, right. these myths that be somehow become entrenched in our society and yet are, are, are fallacies. Right, well, you know, uh, what's that saying, you built it and they shall come like the baseball field? Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's gonna happen here, you know. Uh, and, and the myth has got to be broken by simple, simple things, by erasing uh, all those racial prejudices that we have about a city. Uh, unsafe, you know, right. uh, no, all that stuff, yeah, yeah, close yeah. to the border, you know, uh, security, uh, lighting, you know, where am I going to park, you know, who's going to, am my car, car going to be stolen? Well, I, there's a lot of cars being stolen in Beverly Hills today, you know. Right. So that's where I would steal a car, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's where I would steal a car too. But they, they, you know, there. I mean, it's it's just this thing. And you know what cracks me up? I I live in Chula Vista. I can drive to the theater where we're at in seven minutes. In San Isidro. In, to San Isidro. Yeah. And people go, San Isidro, boy, that's way out in Egypt. Something. Yeah. You go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait. Yeah. Let, let me let me tell you something. <laughs> Every, there's thousands of people go to the sleep train amphitheater there, mm -hmm. which is two minutes away from our theater. They drive from everywhere to see concerts, mm -hmm. right? And they never go, oh my God, as far... They go to hear right. the music. Right, you know? and it's a nice, shiny place, and you know, there aren't, yeah, it's... Uh, and so, oh, we just, we have to work backwards, you know? It's uh, the arrival. It's almost like Disneyland. You know, when you arrive at Disneyland, you you don't know what's there. You just arrive at a discomfort zone. We have to create a pathway of comfort zone for them that says uh, you're in good hands. And then when they get there, they are incredible artistic hands. Uh, time capsule, Bill, that they unearthed a hundred years from now. One uh, moment of wisdom about theater what would you have in that time capsule? I can only repeat what Shakespeare said. Theater is life. The stages of life is theater. The theater of life. We live, we die, and we produce. Beautiful. Theater is life. It's, it's, I, I gotta tell you, it's, it saved me. I didn't want to be a, 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 an artist. I wanted to be a doctor of the mind. I think theater is a behavioral science. I think it's a psychological study of man and women and the human condition. And it fights the three laws, the natural law, the spiritual law, and the man-made law. And that's theater. And it's, if, if, you don't, if you don't know how to do that, if you don't know how to abide by those laws and how to protect yourself from those laws, then you have no place on this planet. We are now living in a theater of the absurd. I mean, we have players on the main stage of politics right now that come from a reality TV. Now, just think about this. Literally. Yeah. Literally. And no disrespect to the president, 
But I got to tell you something. Ha, and I went to, a, this is sad, I went to a motivational talk and a kid asked me, I says, you know, you have to go to school, I said, you, be sure, you know, it's, it's this golden nugget that'll keep you there. And, and school doesn't teach you to make a lot of money. It teaches you how to keep it <laughs> and how to share it. But, you know, I mean, yeah. you don't have to go to school to be a millionaire, uh, Trump is a prime example. But the question was for me, and this is why I'm telling you about the president is the guy is an actor. Unlike Reagan, that was an actor. This guy, Reagan was a movie star. Trump is a reality TV star. Now, let's, let's talk turkey here. Ronald Reagan was a politician through the medium of the movies. Charismatic. He spoke, he was president of the Arts Guild, all that stuff. Right. Governor of California. Mm -hmm. uh, he surrounded himself with a good cast. <laughs> right. Our president is from the reality show circuit. He surrounds himself with reality cast. Now, I'm just speaking with my little ignorance of politics, that I look at this thing and you told me about theater. The, I look at him as a theater person. Theater of the absurd, theater of, of reality, with no substance, and no qualifications. Back to this kid, asked me, why would I go and get an education if the president of the United States is president of the United States without any qualifications? How do you answer a kid? Mm -hmm. You t Remember, you too can be president? Well, now it is true. Yeah, but you get your reality show first. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So theater, going back to theater, if we're going to do a play that's going to deal with the time and about it, it's got to be real. It's got to be a, a mirror to that instant life. And I got to be honest with you, you know, I don't know how to answer these kids now because it's, it's this reflection of the, the, you know, is it, how do you talk about the spiritual law in this? How do you talk about the natural law? How do you talk about the man-made law that is so obscure and so reflective of who is saying what? Well, I think you answer them through, through, the, through the theater, through the plays that you direct. There is truth there, that it's unblemished by uh, agenda. Well, I guess it does have, I think all art is political. It does, it does you draw a little cartoon, it's political. Well, because it said it. It's, it's yes. all propaganda. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I think you, you answer questions. Uh, for, for youth, and you give them guidance, and you give them direction. And, and it doesn't have to be, by the way, it doesn't really have to be a didactic, you know? It, uh, it, 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 preaching to the choir is just, you know... No, and, and I think you just, you wrote a play uh, that's a wonderful little play, it's a, a, called Cupid. Loving okay, Cupid. Look. And so, uh, you know, as an artist, as, a, 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 as somebody that's politically conscious and blah, 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 you read this play and you go, wow, this play's about love. What is more political than love, right. right? What is more essential than the quest of, of the reality, of the emotion that drives us all? People are in jail because, you know, they shoot somebody or kill somebody because they think they were. Right. The passion, the passion. So it, th this is not a heavy thing. What it is is that it's, it's a human thing, right? Right. And that's, I think that's what teatro does. Uh, teatro Mascara Magica is trying to give a platform for humanity to make us better people to do things right that's what theater is supposed to do and on your way if you laugh and you cry and you think that's good but what is it good if it's like going to church what good is it going to church every sunday if you don't practice at least next monday <laughs> right right at least do one at least monday be good but see, it, it amazes me. We've seen the bad good, the bad and the ugly from the beginning of time, from the storytelling. And we've yet to learn. And guess what? Because it's part of the ritual of saying the story over and over and over and over until you get it. The Jewish people have a saying, let's not forget. Right. Let's, right? That's right. Well, thank you. Uh, well, thank it, you very much. It was a pleasure. <laughs>
<laughs> now I'm so heavy. I, I, I you know, I, now I, I gained 20 pounds by talking you, to you. You really so did. Heavy. You, you really did. Yeah, but you I were definitely thank you. full of, of yeah. philosophy. Well, I want to thank you very much because this is a this is a great conversation you and I had. We haven't had. I enjoyed it. Did, did we, I don't know whether we you enjoyed probably it. won't get ratings. No, but it's I'm okay. Having a good time. It's okay. Yeah. But you know what? It is. It really is the uh, the uh, our journey, yours and I's, and and the board. We uh, like to thank our board. Absolutely. Right? And our uh, we have a great board, board and our advisory board and, and, and Casa Familiar for taking Absolutely. And especially Ron Baza, who yes. had shepherd us. Dr. And, Baza, yeah. And uh, uh, I just want to uh, let you know that for me, uh, it's those, um, it's those the gift that you have given us. Uh, and the actors, by the way. The actors. Absolutely. That have worked for nothing. Right. You know, who have given all their sign, their right. treasure, their talent. And, and, and uh, uh, I just, I, I got to tell you, we are blessed by those people. We are. You know, uh, and I think once, you know, once they reflect the, their, their life, they're going to find out how important teatro was in, to their whole entire life. When you're in the eye of the hurricane and your ego's involved and you think, you know, you're a legend in your own mind and all that <laughs> stuff, you kind of don't see who brought you to the dance kind of thing. My dad said, never forget who brought you to the dance. You don't have to like them, you just have to respect them. Right. I think Teatro Mascara Magica to hundreds of people in the long journey will be a very strong part of their puzzle. I, you know, the lifelong puzzle. I think it already has. And I thank you very much. And I, 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 all those people, like the actors, the technicians, uh, you know, everybody who has made this possible for this little choo-choo train with zero budget, you know, and <laughs> just a bunch of, a bunch of guts. I, I hope you've enjoyed our discussion. Uh, well, if you have it, please write to him. Right, yeah. And, and, let and, him he'll, know. and he'll write a whole new yeah, one. Yeah, and then he'll write a thesis <laughs> about it. Uh, if we'd we like to thank the studio, by the way, who made this possible. Absolutely. We're not uh, supposed to mention names. Oh, no, no, we won't. That's right. Well, I, but I, I don't know who Buell is. Yeah, he, yeah. He, yes, I have no yes, idea. Yes. But, but we'd like to thank the studio who did Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Because and we've wasted a lot of their time. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know who's going to. I know that you and I will see this and probably go, hundreds what of times. do we do? Yes, hundreds I mean, of times these. I'll watch this. And you better yeah. watch it, too, because, yeah. uh, you know, this, this could be part of your curriculum. Yeah, really. And. They'll be tested, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to send you an email on the test. Yeah. So if you enjoyed this discussion, and okay. particularly if you did Tell them where they can get a hold of us. That's um, very important. This is a county commercial. jail. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. <laughs> so uh, Teatro Mascara Magica. And, uh, and here we are. And here we are. in the Tijuana jail. <laughs> Have got no money. No, no. Yeah, tell them where we're to. They, well, they, I don't want to... No, give us the, give them our, our website. Oh, yes, teatromascaramagica.org. And how they can be involved? Any way that they wish to be, as an actor, uh, as a volunteer, someone, if you have an extra $100,000 uh, hanging around, uh, and we know who you are, uh, give it to us because we, we need it. Uh, someone has to buy these silly hats for exactly. So uh, please uh, get to know us because we're here to get to know you and, and to put you on the stage. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs>